In this video, we will show how to build a correct water runoff model from start to finish and provide some of the scientific reasoning for how the model is built. To start the code, drag and drop when the green flag is clicked. All code attached to this block will run when you click the green flag over here. Remember that the purpose of this model is to predict the amount of water that runs off for a given amount of rainfall and a surface material, which has a specific absorption limit. Therefore, at the start of the program, we need to assign specific values to the variable's total rainfall and absorption limit. To accomplish this, we'll add two set blocks under when the green flag is clicked. The first set block will be for total rainfall. We will add a value here for what we want to do with our code. For example, two inches. The second variable we need to set is for the absorption limit. We have a specific block for that, and we can add that block here. Next, let's program the three rules for calculating the amount of runoff based on the rules developed at the beginning of Lesson 8. In this model, the runoff is calculated differently depending on if the total rainfall is either equal to, less than, or greater than the material's absorption limit. We will therefore use if blocks to program these three rules. Let's program the case for when the total rainfall is equal to the material's absorption limit. To program this rule, we take an if block into the scripts area. To program the conditional statement, total rainfall is equal to absorption limit, we drag the is equal to operator block into the if block. Then we drag the total rainfall block to the first blank and the absorption limit block to the second blank. Next, let's add the code that calculates how much water is absorbed and how much water becomes runoff. If the amount of rain that falls is exactly the same as how much water can be absorbed, then all of the rainfall will be absorbed and none will run off. This is exactly what we will program into the model. We will set the total absorption to whatever the total rainfall is, and then we will set the total runoff to zero. We will use set blocks to program these statements. The two variables we want to set in each statement are total absorption and total runoff. By setting total absorption and total runoff, we are telling the computer to calculate the appropriate values for these two variables. In this case, because the total rainfall is equal to the absorption limit, all of the rain will be absorbed by the material and there won't be any runoff. This means we should set total absorption equal to total rainfall and total runoff equal to zero. To test if the code is working, we can choose wood chips as the surface material. Wood chips have an absorption limit of one inch. We can then assign the rainfall variable to the value of one. When we run the model, we can see that the rain gauges correctly show the total absorption to be one inch and the runoff to be zero. Next, let's program the case for when the total rainfall is less than the material's absorption limit. First, we'll drag an if block into the scripts area again. To program the conditional statement, total rainfall is less than absorption limit, we drag the is less than operator block into the if block. Then we drag the total rainfall block into the first blank and the absorption limit block into the second blank. Next, we add the code that calculates how much water is absorbed and how much water becomes runoff for this rule. If the amount of rain that falls is less than the amount of water that can be absorbed, then all of the rainfall will be absorbed and there is no water remaining for runoff. This is the same outcome as the first rule we did for the total rainfall is equal to the materials absorption limit. So we'll set the program's rules again in this if statement to the same thing.
To test if the code is working after we added this rule, we can use wood chips again as our surface material. Wood chips have an absorption limit of one inch. So we can then assign the rainfall variable to the value of 0 0.8 inches, which is less than the absorption limit. When we run the model, we can see that the rain gauges correctly show the total absorption to be 0 0.8 inches and the runoff to be 0 inches. Next, let's program the case for when the total rainfall is greater than the material's absorption limit. First, we'll drag an if block into the scripts area again. To program the conditional statement total rainfall is greater than absorption limit, we drag the is greater than operator block into the if block. Then we drag the total rainfall block into the first blank and the absorption limit block into the second blank. Then we add the code that calculates how much water is absorbed and how much water becomes runoff for this rule. If the amount of rain that falls is greater than the amount of water that can be absorbed, then there is more rainfall than can be absorbed. Some of the rainfall will be absorbed up to the absorption limit and the rest will run off. This is exactly what we will program into the model. We will set the total absorption to whatever the absorption limit is, and then we will set the total runoff to be the rest of the rainfall or the total rainfall minus absorption limit. We will use set blocks to program these statements. Again, uh, the two variables we want to set in this if statement are total absorption and total runoff. In this case, because the total rainfall is greater than the absorption limit, the material will absorb as much rainfall as it can, then the rest will run off. This means we should set total absorption equal to the absorption limit. The total runoff will be the rest of the rainfall that was not absorbed by the material. So we can set that equal to the total rainfall minus the absorption limit. To test if this part of the code is working after we added it, we can use wood chips again as our surface material. Wood chips have an absorption limit of 1 inch. Uh, so here we'll assign the rainfall variable to the value of 1.5, which is greater than the absorption limit. When we run the model, we can see that the rain gauges correctly show the total absorption to be 1 inch and the runoff to be 0 0.5 inches. Now, you're ready to test this code with different materials and see what happens. Happy coding!